Aren't you tired of feeling like time is just slipping through your fingers while you're painting or drawing? Well, today I have some game-changing strategies that will save you precious hours and help you maximize your productivity for what really matters, your art. In this video, I'll be sharing five time-saving strategies that I wish I had known earlier in my artistic journey. These tips have improved my workflow so much, allowing me to spend more time painting and less time doing chores in my studio. You really want to watch this video until the end because I'm going to share a bonus tip that will take your time management to the next level. Whatever you want to draw, paint or sculpt, these strategies can be applied to your unique creative process no matter what you do. The way I see it means more art for everyone. But wait, here's where things get exciting. I'm pretty sure that you're going to have some tips and tricks of your own that I didn't think about. So make sure to share them in the comments section below. All right, now that it's out of the way, let's jump right in. Picture this, you're in the zone, inspiration flowing, but wait, uh, where is that specific brush that you need? Sound familiar? Well, fear not, because organizing your materials will be your secret weapon in the battle against wasted time. When your brushes, paints and palette knives are neatly arranged, finding what you need becomes a breeze. No more rummaging through a chaotic mess just to locate that one elusive tool. Making a brush holder like this one or using jars to keep your brushes organized not only saves you time but also ensures that your precious tools stay in their optimal condition. It really needs to be right next to your hand and next to your palette. I work with a table palette and what I like to do is organize my stuff in concentric circles. The tools that I use the most often are in the first circles, so right around my palette, paint and brushes, so here, available at any time. Then the second circle is a little bit larger with things that are also important but that I use a little bit less often with my palette knives, my cleaning rags, my mediums, and also very important, my trash, which is right here next to my rags. So it's not much, but every time I save a fraction of a second for something that I do thousands of times every day. Next, I have my third circle with what I need to oil out my pliers, scrappers, materials for my studies, etc. Until the last circle, all the way in the back of my studio with the stuff that I forget most of the time and I almost never use. Now let's talk about paint tubes. Try to organize them on your palette in a logical order, like grouping them by cutter or value. This simple step will make cutter selection a seamless process, saving you fractions of valuable painting time. Same idea for your medium. Don't prepare it every time at the start of your painting session. Prepare it once every couple of months and store it in small bottle containers like this. This way it's always ready when you need it. Just one thing, don't prepare too much at once because it can dry in the bottle and you just be wasting your precious medium. Also try to think about verticality. It's super important for efficiency. Try to avoid spreading your gear too much horizontally. There's nothing more detrimental to your productivity than sprawling because it means that you're going to have to walk and hunt for your gear all over your studio. Have magnets, hooks to attach your equipment vertically all over the place, like this here on the side of my table palette with my essential canvas tools, for example, a hammer, a staple remover, my trusty sticker roll to remove cat hair before I paint. And my favorite hack in my studio is this. It's a just a simple bookshelf that I turned vertically and on coasters. And it's so useful to store my stuff right next to my easel. I use it all the time. Like I have my tape, my gloves, my mirrors, and this is where I place my model on top here, either my laptop, my computer screen, my tablet, like this. I can also have my black box if I need to paint a still life. It can follow me wherever I go and always saves me a lot of time finding the right tool. And final idea is to have some type of pouch that you can attach to your belt 
And this way, you always have your most valuable equipment with you everywhere you go. Obviously, every studio is different and I'm sure that you'll find your own way to optimize your equipment based on your needs. If you need to take an entire day just to clean everything and organize, just do it. It's worth it. It will save you time on the long run and allow you to paint more or draw more. Before we move on, a quick reminder to check out my oil painting course in the description below if you want to take your skills to the next level. This course is designed to help you master the art of oil painting with step-by-step -step instructions, valuable tips and detailed demonstrations. Whether you're a beginner or looking to refine your technique, this course is a must try. Next one, planning your composition. It will be your ultimate time-saving superpower. Before you even touch your canvas or paper, take a moment to plan your composition, but really, really plan. Trust me, this simple step will save you countless hours of frustration, countless, you know, eraser shavings and pentimenti. This means retouching a painting. Try to have a solid battle plan. Grab your sketchbook or open up a digital canvas on your computer. Start experimenting with thumbnail sketches. Explore different arrangements, placement, color schemes, and let your creativity flow. If you're still undecided, take the time to do studies. It may seem like a waste of time, but you can learn a lot of useful things that will save you from fumbling later on. Once you've found the perfect composition, transfer it confidently on your working surface, on the big canvas. And by doing this planning up front, you'll avoid some major adjustments later and your painting process will be much smoother and more efficient. And when you scale up from your sketchbook to your canvas, you might have a problem getting the right size. It can be annoying to start again because your figure is too big or too small on your canvas and it happens every time. What I like to do to optimize my composition battle plan is trace a rectangle in my sketchbook. Every time I plan for a composition, I trace a small frame, a rectangle that has the same proportions as my canvas. And then I draw the center lines and the third to smoothly switch from the pocket size sketchbook to the big canvas. Really, I can't emphasize this enough. Take the time to plan your compositions. Trust me, it's a small investment in the beginning, but it will pay off in a big way, leaving you with more time to focus on bringing your artistic vision to life. Having a clear vision of what you want to achieve before you begin can streamline your painting process and prevent wasted time or unnecessary revisions. It can also be a help for preparation, help you prepare colors in advance, maybe prepare the right mediums, pre-select the right materials so that you're ready to jumpstart when it's time to paint. Also, don't underestimate the power of chunking. Your painting is like a big plate but you can have a bite-sized strategy to paint one area every day with manageable bits every time. Next tip, prepare for your most valuable time. Not every moment in the studio is worth the same in terms of artistic value. What you want is to capitalize on your most valuable time so that you make the best use of it when it's time to paint. Preparation is the key to maximizing your most valuable time as an artist. By spending a little time up front to set up your art station, gather all your materials, you'll hit the ground running when inspiration finally strikes. And you don't want to waste any of this precious time because it's, it's limited. Prepare to capitalize on your most active time, your creative time. Sharpen those pencil in advance. Squeeze out fresh paint onto your palette. Arrange your brushes in a way that facilitates easy access in the morning the next day. Having everything ready and within reach will save you precious minutes and keep your creative flow uninterrupted. If you have a model sitting for you, you don't want to waste any of their precious posing time to, I don't know, mix your colors, prepare your mediums, or go find something somewhere in your studio. 
you have to prepare this stuff before your model arrives and simply make the final adjustments when they're there. It's a real person taking time to stay immobile for you. So be respectful of this precious, precious time and don't go searching for stuff when they're posing. Same thing if you're alone in your studio. Respect your own active time. Like if it was a time with a model next to you. Make sure that your workspace is ready for the next day before you leave. This way, when you have the energy to start painting again in the morning, you won't be wasting any time cleaning and doing annoying chores. But preparation goes just beyond just the physical and material setup. Create a calming atmosphere, an inspiring atmosphere around your art. Light a scented candle if it works for you. Put some flowers, I don't know, play some soothing music or heavy metal, or even surround yourself with art that inspires you. This will help you get into the right mindset quickly. Next tip, use fast drying mediums. By incorporating fast drying mediums into your artistic arsenal, you can significantly reduce the drying time of your painting. The beauty of fast drying medium is that they speed up the drying process without compromising the quality of your artwork. You can build layers, add details and experiment with textures, all while knowing that your painting will dry in a fraction of the time with a slower drying medium. If you don't have the time to wait for paint to dry, use acrylic or any water-based technique. They're all faster. If you want to take advantage of the fast drying time of acrylic, yet still, you still want the final vibrant aspect of oil, then what you can do is simply paint the underpainting with acrylic, let it dry and finish with oil. And if it's just oil that you're interested in, then consider using an alkyd medium like liquid or a galkid. It will speed up the drying time by 50%. If you have a show and you need to varnish fast, the alkyd will reduce the waiting time. Normally it's supposed to be six months, but with an alkyd it can be around three it's not a definitive rule, it depends on many things like what type of pigments you use, how thick you have painted. So poke the thickest area of your painting with your nail and if it doesn't leave a trace, it should be ready for varnish. But just to be sure, give it as much time to dry as you can. And to varnish really fast, Gemvar is supposed to allow you to varnish as soon as the paint is touch dry. It's not a sponsor or anything, although I wish I was sponsored by Gemblin, I would still wait at least a month to be sure, but Gemvar supposedly can be applied when the painting is simply touch dry. Still, I recommend waiting for a month. Final tip, bulk and schedule. First, let's dive into scheduling. As artists, time can easily slip away from us if we don't have a plan. So by creating a schedule or a routine for your artistic practice, you can optimize your time and make significant progress in how you spend your time and how, how much actual time you spend creating. Block out specific time slots for your art, whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly. Treat these slots as non-negotiable work hours. I know it's silly, but Imagine that your art is like your boss and it wants to make sure that you do your work time, no slacking off. And by doing so, you'll develop a disciplined mindset and ensure that you'll dedicate quality time to your craft every, every day or every moment that you're supposed to be working on your art. If you let yourself go and try to work only when you feel like it, You'll waste a lot of valuable time because you need to start first before you can get in the zone and start feeling like it. It is like when you don't want to go somewhere at first, you're not motivated, but someone forces you to. And once you're there, you realize that it's actually great and you like it and you don't want to go back. And it's the same with art. Imagine that your art forces you to start whether you want it or not. And after you start, then you can feel like it and enjoy it. Next, consider bulking. Every time you do something in the studio, you need to take things out and then clean up. It all takes time, so bulking is a huge time saver. When you need to gesso a canvas, don't just prime one, prime 10. 
This way, instead of cleaning 10 times, you'll just clean once at the end and you'll also have 10 canvases ready. Same thing for cleaning oil painting brushes. It can be a time consuming task. So to save time, keep in mind that you don't have to clean them individually with soap and water after each session. You can let them sit in a bath of oil for a few days, a few weeks, and only clean them thoroughly with soap and water at the end of the month. And this is my favorite tip because it saved me so much time. I used to clean my brushes all the time individually after each painting session. And it was so slow, so time consuming and also bad for my bristles. So this one both saved me time and it saved my brushes. And now a bonus tip that will take your time saving game to the next level. Are you ready? Here it is. Embrace the power of digital tools. Digital tools such as computers, photography, digital tablets can be game changers for artists if you want to just go faster. With a digital setup, you can experiment, make edits or even undo mistakes with a simple touch of a button that you frankly wish you could do on an actual painting. So try your hand first on a digital painting before you start making a change on your actual painting. Let's say you're in the middle of a painting and you want to change something like the color of the background, but you're not sure what color. Then what you can do is simply take a photo of your work, put it in a digital image editing software and change the color with a filter mask. No need to make a study with paint if it's something quick like that. And you can even compare several outcomes in minutes. Digital art has a lot of flexibility and efficiency and even it eliminates the unnecessary mess that can come from traditional mediums. So my friends, if you're looking to save even more time and unlock new artistic possibilities, consider integrating digital tools into your artistic toolkit. It feels less traditional, less artistic, sure, but it definitely saves time and it can help you make more paintings. So that's a win in my book. If you want another video to watch next, click here. Again, a huge thank you to everyone supporting me on Patreon. This video wouldn't be possible without your support. If you want to join the community, the link is in the description below as always. You'll also find the links to my courses, my oil painting course and my color course. All right, that's it for this video, my friends. As always, joy and inspiration to you.